Today in the Smuggler's Room, we play with lasers. Oh, stop! I meant laser cutters, not laser blasters. Oh, sorry! Sorry! sorry. <sighs> That's coming up. What's up, you awesome geeks? I'm Brian, and welcome to the Smuggler's Room. This week, this chubby geek is playing with a new toy. I mean tool, it's a tool. It's designed for hard work, blood, sweat, and tears. Who am I kidding? It's a tool, but it's as fun as a toy. I'm talking about the Glowforge laser cutter and engraver. And I'll say right out of the gate that Glowforge did not sponsor this episode. We purchased the Glowforge because it seemed to best fit the needs that we had. There are a lot of different types of laser cutters and engravers out there if you're in the market for one. So make sure you do your research before you purchase. Now, I won't get into all the nitty gritty details on purchasing a laser cutter today because we wanna build a project. But I will say that for us, we purchased the Glowforge for three main reasons. It's a simple, easy to use setup. It works on multiple platforms and it cuts or engraves a huge amount of materials. Now, as time goes on and we use the machine, we'll break down all the features and give you a full review if you'd like. But for today, let's get a project started. Now we realize that not everyone has a laser cutter or access to a laser cutter, but we're still hoping that today's build will give you inspiration for your own upcoming project, especially the base that we're gonna build. I chose some walnut that my grandfather had in his shop that I was given after he passed. I thought this would be a great way to turn it into something that we could have in our home. And of course, Star Wars it up because that's what we do around here, right? I also knew this would be an illuminated display because the acrylic we engraved would look really sweet with some lighting added to it. Now, I used the CNC machine to create a slot that would fit the acrylic perfectly, but this could easily be done with a router and the right size bit. However, I didn't have a bit small enough, so this was my best option. As far as the base of the project, I used a variety of walnut pieces of different thicknesses and then layered them together. Then everything was sanded down with multiple grits of sandpaper until I had a clean, smooth finish before stain. Now, I'll tell you, when it comes to stain and walnut, the only thing I use is a wipe-on poly. The color of the walnut is incredible, and I hate to see that type of material covered up with any other type of stain. Okay, so we have a great piece of hardwood, but this is the smuggler's room, so there has to be greeblies, right? I stash as many aluminum pieces that I can get my hands on. For whatever reason, these machine pieces always have a Star Wars look to me. I think it's the way they are unrecognizable and makes them appear otherworldly. And I've mentioned that I get these pieces from all kinds of places, taking apart old electronics, stripping from old equipment, or looking through eBay. So you absolutely have my permission to take stuff apart. But if you strip the insides of your spouse's 1979 Sony Walkman, I will deny I ever said anything.
Okay, I have a confession to make. My name is Brian, and I'm addicted to Greeblies. All right, there, I said it. I feel so much better, like a huge weight has just been lifted from my shoulders. Because the truth is, you really can overdo it. And I did on this project. Let me show you what I mean. I took some of these extra metal Earth 3D models and kit bashed them. I know, I know. In 10 years, they'll be rare collectibles and worth millions, and I used them on this project. Don't worry, I'll feel the regret later. But I used these cool shapes and attached them to pieces of African black wood, which I really liked overall. And the intention was to add them to the base as another layer of interest. Greebly it up, you know? And greebly I did, all over the base. Then I pulled away the protective cover of the acrylic and cleaned that up. Don't worry, I'll get back to explaining the over of this base in a sec. Once the acrylic was installed, I saw it. Right there, it's too much. It's distracting to me. It looks like I tried too hard or I went too far. Anyway, overnight I thought about it and the next day I went to work cleaning up my mistake. For me, the end result was much cleaner. The base was less distracting. Overall, there are still sci-fi elements to the piece, but the great walnut does not take a back seat. to say that fancy tools like a CNC machine or a laser engraver or cutter, they make things super easy. You can be incredibly precise in ways that maybe I can't on my own with other tools. But we don't want to discourage you around here if you don't have access to those. You can still create awesome pieces without them. We really like these cool tools and we like a lot of other methods as well and we're striving to provide you with as many different variations on making projects that we can. Because at the end of the day, we just wanna make sure you keep building something out of nothing.